Um, my name is Catherine Cease. I'm an archaeological conservator, and I am presently the uh, conservator at the Peabody Museum here at uh, Yale. This morning, we heard a number of uh, case histories of problems in the Middle East and, and elsewhere. Um, and in, in this session, we will hear some responses that have been developed by various um, organizations. And I should say right off that the first on your program, the first presentation listed for this session, uh, we will postpone it and put it to the end because the presenter is not here. So we will start with Corinne Wegener. I met her as arts, when she was Arts, Monuments, and Archives Officer in Iraq in 2003. She is the Cultural Heritage Preservation Office at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, and she manages the Smithsonian's Cultural Rescue Initiative. Her presentation is Smithsonian Cultural Rescue Initiative. Corey. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm the post-lunch speaker, but I'll try to be quick and interesting. And the big green arrow does it. Um, just uh, for those of you who might not be familiar with the Smithsonian, um, created in 19 or 1846, sorry, much older than that, um, for the increase and in diffusion of knowledge, thanks to James Smithson's a uh, bequest to a uh, British citizen who'd never been to America but gave us a lot of money to start uh, an institution of learning. And we have uh, 19 museums, nine research centers, and a zoo to take care of. And in order to do that work, we have a lot of cultural heritage professionals as well as scientists. And um, it, I'm, I feel really lucky to be there because we have a lot of professionals, everything from uh, facilities experts, safety experts, conservators. We have several different conservation centers at the Smithsonian, including our Museum Conservation Institute out in Suitland, Maryland. We have, yes, this is where the Ark of the Covenant is stored, if you've ever watched the Indiana Jones films. Um, just kidding, out at the um, Museum Support Center in Suitland. So um, we're very lucky to have people working on things like uh, volcanology and um, earthquake science and global climate change, anything you would want to find out about, you can find someone who's involved in that. And so that's why um, we have thought about uh, this initiative to serve as a cross-disciplinary initiative across the Smithsonian, bringing together the best of what we have available in recognition, resilience, response, and research for the Smithsonian and for many, many partners that we've been working with over the years, and to include Yale University. Um, how did the Smithsonian get involved in this? Well, of course, we take care of America's collections uh, at the Smithsonian, but we first became very engaged in this in about 2010 with the Haiti earthquake. And some of you may know that Haiti, uh, the Smithsonian has a folk life festival on the mall every year. It's a very large celebration of both uh, of international cultural heritage as well as America's cultural heritage. And in 2004, this was celebrated with the um, Minister, Ministry of Culture of Haiti. And so when the earthquake happened in 2010, many of our colleagues who had served as fellows during that time uh, eventually rose to positions of prominence within the Haitian government and the Ministry of Culture or were uh, it housed at museums or other cultural institutions and asked for assistance. And so this is how I first met some of the colleagues working on that initiative. I was at the time the president of the U.S. Committee of the Blue Shield, and we partnered with the American Institute for Conservation and their um, cultural emergency response teams and um, many other organizations and institutions, including the International Center for the Preservation of Cultural Heritage in Rome, who we'll also hear from today, to, to help with that immediate response and training for our colleagues. Over an 18-month project, we worked with many partners, UNESCO. You can see here we worked with some of the Japanese blue helmets to help us salvage collections from the rubble. This was at um, the Center for Haitian Art. And we trained more than 100 Haitian colleagues to be able to 
respond and salvage uh, and preserve and also tr training for recovery operations and post disaster recovery operations over this 18 month project. And we had many conservators and staff uh, deploy to Haiti from the Smithsonian. Um, all of this culminating in a, a large grant that we received um, from the Ben Stiller Foundation and working with our Haitian colleagues in Port-au-Prince and the US Embassy in Haiti to um, develop a conservation training center at Kaskaya University last year. So um, what else happened after that? So that, that was kind of the initial push, and it was a big push. We got money from USAID. Uh, we worked with the President's uh, Committee on the Arts and the Humanities, uh, worked with the US Department of State, as I said. And so we had a mix of public-private partnerships to fund that project. Uh, in 2012, the Smithsonian uh, became even more engaged in the domestic response for cultural heritage after Hurricane Sandy. Smithsonian is part of the Heritage Emergency National Task Force for Domestic Response for Heritage, which is a, a group of about 40 public-private partnerships, including the interagency. And now the Smithsonian is the co-chair of the task force with FEMA, and we're working on a variety of projects, but we developed a Cultural Crisis Recovery Center in New York City after the Hurricane Sandy and worked with a number of institutions on salvage of materials. Here you see Carol Grissom from our Museum Conservation Institute working with colleagues from the Martha Graham Dance Company. Um, so the, uh, it seemed like after I came to the Smithsonian in 2012 that uh, disasters seem to become more prevalent around the world after the Arab Spring. We saw the destruction of cultural heritage in Mali. We heard about that from our colleagues. And we were asked, we knew that there was uh, a lot of distress about the built heritage and about the manuscripts collections in Mali, but we were asked to work specifically with the museums and we um, worked with a number of partners, UNESCO and the International Council of Museums on this West African Museum training workshop that we held in 2014. Um, there has been a lot of discussion today about Syria and Iraq, so I'll briefly cover how the Smithsonian is engaged in this with a number of partners that you see here. Uh, and uh, the main partners on the Safeguarding the Heritage of Syria and Iraq project are the Smithsonian and the Penn Museum and um, Cultural Heritage Center. But you see there have been a number of partners along the way. And with a mix of public and private funding, we did some training in Gaziantep, Turkey for colleagues working in opposition-controlled parts of Syria and provided them with information about emergency response and recovery, salvage, rehousing of collections that had been damaged in the conflict. Uh, at this time, the primary damage to collections had been caused by um, conflict between the warring factions rather than ISIS. Um, but that's been a growing concern, protecting heritage collections uh, from deliberate as well as uh, um, inadvertent damage to heritage in the conflict. Um, our colleagues pointed out that the thing that they most wanted to do was to protect this particular mosaics museum in Idlib province. We provided the training, the materials, bought them tools, all working with colleagues at the Department of State to ensure the best practices on this effort. And, uh, as far as transferring funds and that sort of thing. And they were able to protect that. But unfortunately, last year, that same museum, the Mara Museum, was bombed by uh, two very large barrel bombs. And even though the superstructure of this caravanserai, uh, which is a historic building in and of itself, were, were severely damaged, the uh, facing system and sandbagging actually protected the mosaics and that has been restored now, more sandbags added um, to preserve it. One of the other parts of the, well, the other part of the Syria and Iraq project is the Iraq portion, and we're working with the Iraqi Institute for the Conservation of Antiquities and Heritage, also along with the University of Delaware, and this is a State Department funded project for the Conservation Center in Erbil. Um, we've done a lot of emergency training there, but they also train in uh, basic conservation methods trying to create the next generation of conservation colleagues in Iraq. Um, after the Nepal earthquake, uh, in an unprecedented collaboration with ICOMOS, ECROM, 
ICOM, the Smithsonian, and the Department of Antiquities and Heritage in Nepal, we were able to do a quick assessment and training uh, first aid for cultural heritage in Nepal after the earthquake last year, working with a group of about 20 participants from museums across the Kathmandu Valley. Um, they worked together with the Nepal military to provide some salvage operations and then to go back and train the trainers in their own museum. And I would, would be remiss if I didn't mention my colleagues Aparna Tandon from Ikram and Rohit Jagasu from Icomos. And we worked really closely together to provide uh, two training courses, one for museum colleagues and one for colleagues working on built heritage. Um, we also felt it was necessary to train the military, which is kind of a, a uh, expertise of mine and help them to understand better how to work with their colleagues in the museums on the ground. Um, we also train civilians and other civilians and this is the first aid for cultural heritage and crisis partnership that we do uh, this between the Smithsonian and ECROM and this was our class last year in the Netherlands and this will be hosted this year at the Smithsonian in the month of June. Um, as part of that globe I showed you, we also do research. Um, there's been a lot of discussion today also about, okay, I have to finish up, about uh, documenting sites. We also have a documentation project between the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the Smithsonian, and the University of Pennsylvania. And we do it, we're doing a little bit different project though. From the National Science Foundation, we have a grant to record coordinates. Um, not, it's not just to, uh, document illicit traffic and damage, the idea is that we're creating a data set about the destruction of cultural heritage that will be um, a, a scientific data set that people can use to analyze damage to heritage in other conflicts as well. So it's more of a, a larger scientific research project. And then, you know, we're always trying to raise awareness. We had a de the Death of History exhibition for the U.S. Senate uh, last fall to talk about raise awareness with them about the damage to heritage in Syria and Iraq. And then, as I mentioned, military training is kind of a specialty, and we do this in conjunction and partnership with the U.S. Committee of the Blue Shield to teach our own U.S. military how to recognize and respect cultural heritage. So that's all I have for you right now. Thanks very much.